Hi, I am Bipul. Today in this video, I want to talk about Smart on Fire. Before speaking about Smart on Fire, I want to show you a scenario uh, what was happening before the Smart project. Now, uh, as an example, I am taking a 3HF Fender, Fender A, Fender B, and Fender C. And on top of these ESR vendors, these multiple apps are built. Uh, for example, the application one, it, it builds uh, on top of Fender A. App 2 is built on top of Fender B. And App 3 is built on top of Fender C. Now, as a developer, if a, uh, when the application one was built, it followed the guideline on how to build application on that specific ESR vendor. And uh, even though these application one uh, are in application 2 and application 3, it, 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 they do the same thing. It leads displays the medications for one patient, but the application one, it cannot switch to Fender B. If it wants to switch to Fender B, then the developer has to redevelop the application and follow the guideline on how to build the application on Fender B. Now, this lacks the uh, innovation in developers. Now, how Smart Solves is used? The Smart project, it was started in 2010, and it stands for Substitutable Medical Applications for Reusable Technologies. It solves this problem by adding an extra layer uh, between the uh, EHR vendors and applications. Now, the smart uh, framework, uh, the smart project, it defines the it defines a framework of how to build a smart container. And it's each EHR vendor they follow this uh, framework to build their smart container and they host this system on top of their EHR systems. Now, uh, here the application one, uh, it uh, now it, the traffic goes through the smart container. And the developer it follows the guideline on how to build the application on top of smart container, and it becomes the it, it now becomes the vendor independent because the app one it supports uh, it supports vendor A, vendor B, and vendor C. Same thing here with application two and the application three. And as a patient, let's say if you're if you're a patient and you are using this uh, using application one and you don't like this application no month. And then you can switch the, your application uh, to application two because since it's ESR vendor independent, it doesn't. It doesn't matter that when you uh, when your uh, data leaps, since uh, this system they can support any uh, this application they can support any ESR vendors. Now we can switch your application. That's why it's called substitutable medical applications. Now let's talk about Fire. Fire stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. Uh, this Fire stand uh, it was uh, uh, started in uh, 2011. It, it was implemented by HL7. HL7 is a non-profit organization and they build healthcare standards. There are many standards uh, built by HL7. And uh, uh, Fire, it's all about resources. You can find many resources in HL7 Fire. And Fire have also versions uh, like R4, R5. Mm -hmm. So uh, its resource, it defines, uh, they, they have defined a schema, like for, which schema to use uh, for a specific resource here, for example, this patient resource, I, as an example, I am showing you the patient resource here. And uh, you can represent this resource in the XML, Zation, and other format also. So it's a fire resource. It, it defines in, it divides in three parts, uh, extensions, narrative, and defined structure data. So in the extension part, if, uh, if, if you, I uh, want to uh, include some uh, customized information which are not the part of the uh, resource itself. So you can uh, you can insert this information inside the extensions. And also uh, you have to provide the a schema for, for your customized data inside the extension so that others can parse this information by reading the extension part. Again, the narrative part, it uh, holds the summarized information uh, like here, it's, uh, it contains the patient name and the date of birth and the patient ID. It can be displayed in HTML also. And the next, the next part is the defined data structure. Uh, defined data structure is very well defined. It, uh, it contains the most of the information about the resources. Uh, uh, here, the, in this patient resource, it, it, it contains the patient name, patient ID, the date of birth, the gender, the organization. So, uh, all this information uh, are available in HL7 file. Uh, you can read it. Uh, you can visit the website and uh, read the uh, schema for different uh, resources. So uh, that's all about fire. Now, <clears throat> smart plus fire is equal to smart and fire. 
uh, when smart project uh, was started they uh, solved the problem uh, by building their own data model so what they did is that they they have a one data model and they transform that uh, data to specific HR vendors and, and later what uh, after fire project they have switched that data model to a fire model now it becomes smart on fire now smart on fire it, it is not only about the data model it's actually an ecosystem and in this ecosystem you have uh, a authorization server a fire server and it is connected with the EHR data and your application it, 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 it connects to both the authorization server and the fire server now this ecosystem is supported by many ESR vendors, uh, the Epic, Sana, all scripts, and there are many ESR vendors you can find that uh, supports this uh, ESR ecosystem, uh, smart ecosystem. Now the smart ecosystem, it, there are many features it provides. For example, it gives you the platform to register your application. Now, how when you build when you build a smart on fire application, you have first we have to register that application. And uh, this features, uh, this specialty is provided by smart ecosystem. And again, after building, after, I mean, uh, defining the application, you have to choose the type of the application. For example, we have the, is it a patient facing app? Is it a provider facing app? Or is it a backend facing, a big backend apps? And again, the app security is provided by smart ecosystem. Um, let's say you want to uh, add some uh, secrets to your applications. So you can do that. And again, uh, the, uh, it's very uh, the, the important part is uh, launch scenario. So uh, there are different launch scenario in uh, smart and fire apps. For example, uh, you can launch your application from the e, uh, EHR system, and also you can launch from it from browsers. Uh, and also there are uh, configuration where uh, you know where you you, you can display uh, the the application can display one dialog for uh, selecting a patient. For example, if your application is a provider facing app, after the, uh, after the provider uh, logs into the uh, log into your app, it, uh, the provider can select one specific patient, and uh, based on that specific patient, uh, the the application will retrieve the resources. So these are the main features of smart ecosystem. Now, how to build one uh, smart on fire application? The first thing, uh, you have to set up your application. Uh, uh, you have to register your application, then choose the type of your application. For example, if you want to use the Epic as uh, a Smart on Fire platform, then you can go to Epic and you register your application. Uh, you will get a sandbox, so it's free. And then uh, choose, choose the application type. Then the next thing is, next thing is uh, to retrieve one uh, resource. Uh, the, so the, there are main, for, there are mainly four steps for retrieving uh, a resource from fire server uh, using smart on fire framework the first thing is you will retrieve the authorization url and token url from the base file well, now the base file url it will uh, it's given by your uh, application uh, provider uh, if it's epic the epic will give you this base file url and using that you you, you will uh, you can get this uh, alteration URL and token URL by just hitting one get request to that. Again, after getting the uh, alteration uh, URL, uh, you, you now you have to uh, retrieve one alteration code, which you will get it by uh, get it by sending one request to alteration URL, and the response uh, the response will be one redirect URL. But uh, when you request the uh, the when you request uh, an authorization code to the authorization URL, you will be redirected to a login screen. Uh, if it was a provider facing app, then you have to uh, log in as a provider. And after successful login, uh, this uh, the platform will redirect you to uh, to a different URL. And uh, that URL contains the authorization code. And you have to catch that URL. Now for that, you can use one server and uh, you can predefine the endpoint of your server where you want to catch that authorization code in the uh, smart on file application while you were starting an application. Now, let's say you uh, got the authorization code. Now the third thing is, uh, third step is you will retrieve the access token from the token URL using the authorization code. And uh, the last step, after you after you have this uh, or access token, now you can retrieve uh, resources from fire server. 
For example, if you want to retrieve a patient resource of SNID 12345, you just have to send one request to the base file URL slash patient slash patient ID and send your access token and you will get the patient resource. Now these steps, these uh, four steps uh, I have shown you, uh, you can implement it uh, manually uh, using, uh, py let's say, Python language uh, or JavaScript language. But uh, there are already uh, solutions exist for this since uh, the uh, the smart on fire uh, they have also released the libraries which uh, implements the framework so you can use the library and uh, build a smart on fire apps very easily so uh, in this video i will demonstrate uh, how to build a smart on fire application using uh, using using that library and also i will show you how to uh, modify that uh, modify some of the code to to retrieve some uh, other to retrieve other resources so let's start by creating one of Smart on Fire apps. So I am using Python and uh, also I will use uh, Epic as Smart on Fire platform. And also here I am providing one repo here uh, that this library implements the Smart on Fire framework. It is available for, uh, also it is available for JavaScript. And uh, let's start by creating one PNB and activate it. Done, let's clone this repo. It's cloning. Almost done. Okay. Now let's install uh, install the requirements file. So. Here it is installed. Now for Smart on Fire apps, you have to register one uh, Smart on Fire application in Epic. So here's the link to create one uh, Smart on Fire apps. So it's fire.epic.com slash developer slash apps. Let's go to this link. Here is, it's asking you to sign up. So uh, you can sign up here. I'm already, uh, I already have an account. So let's uh, log into my account. So. Here is my username and password. So uh, here you can create one uh, Smart on Fire apps. So let's create. Uh, here you uh, you can provide the your application name. Let's say my test app one, and here you can choose the application type. So for example, who uh, who is going to uh, use your application. Uh, I'm choosing as a provider facing apps, so a uh, provider can uh, log into my application and use it. Use it. And uh, here uh, is a list of a list of uh, resources like uh, you can enable uh, for so that your application can access. So let's say if you want to access one patient resource, patient dot. Uh, uh, let's say I want to search for patient dot read. Just move it to the selected area and also let's say source and let's say medication request dot uh, source and read the uh, helps use uh, for search and grapes again uh all of the all the intolerance uh for so also search and read and okay uh, for now i will leave uh, these uh, these resources because uh in this demonstration i will show you how to retrieve a medication uh, request and allergy intolerance data for a patient so okay now now here here you have to give uh, provide the uh, redirect URL. now this redirect URL you will need for because uh, when you ask for the authorization code from the authorization url uh, it will redirect to this endpoint, whatever you will give here. Okay, so uh, here you have to get the authorization code. So uh, I will use uh, this one as a redirect URI. So here, uh, I just put it here. Let me move this HTTP part because it's already happened. Then, uh, so it, so in this redirect URI, uh, uh, redirect URI, I'll uh, run one server. And in that server, uh, the authorization code, it can be get, get. And uh, that's all, okay? 
So here, uh, there is the option for uh, is confidence line. And this is for your app security. You can add extra information here, extra security here, and click save. It's ready. Okay. Now I am using the smart on fire version R4 and also click accept. Now, before save and uh, ready for percent box, uh, here you will need this non-production client ID. So this is this client ID for production use and this is for non-production client. For the non-production client ID, uh, you will get one uh, testing sandbox, so you can uh, you will get uh, some uh, test data so you can uh, test your application. So uh, you will put this uh, here for now, okay? So I will use this in our program. And uh, let's uh, uh, click save and ready for sandbox. And it is listed uh, here, my test app one. Okay, now we have successfully created one smart on fire apps in Epic. Now, till now we have uh, uh, we have app ID from Epic, and also we have to uh, we have, we set up the redirect query. And now the API base, of which we can get it from here, uh, Epic Fire endpoints. So go to this link. And here, here are the uh, FireBS URL. So since uh, we are using R4, so here's the FireBS URL. So copy it and I use it here. So uh, when we are ready and uh, ready, ready for all this information, so uh, we can uh, we can use this information in our uh, in our code here. So uh, when you clone this repo uh, inside that, there is a file called flaskapp.py. So go to that uh, file and and you copy this information from here to and paste it here. Smart default. Quit. Now uh, we have configured our smart on fire application and we can now run our server. So here, so run this command. It's running. Now uh, you can open this link. Look at the host 8000. Let's click this link. Let's see the status. Okay. Uh, yeah. Here it is displayed. So uh, this is a very simple uh, Flask application. So since uh, we are requesting the uh, root location of this uh, URL, so it's it is using a this code here. So here is defined the app root, and here it's returning this hello. There's hello. Please authorize all this information or uh, return from this this API. Now click on authorize. Let's click authorize and there will be one uh, login screen since our app is a provider facing app and you will be rejected this the screen. Now here, here Epic they have uh, provided uh, testing user ID and password which you can get it from from this link. Let's go to this link. And uh, these are the testing username and password. So I'll use a fire do. So let's let's put fire do. And also the password. I, I have this password earlier. I click login. Uh, user authentication is blocked for your account. Contact system and Mr. to unblock your account. Now, sometimes what happened? Uh, since there are there are uh, multiple accounts here, so you can use this one also. Let's say let's use this fire one. Fire one, and the password is same as fire two. Now let's wait. It's loading. 
Ha, here it's asking you to select a de department. Click continue. Now, uh, as you can see, this uh, patient selection selection screen here you will see. <laughs> so here is uh, asking you to select a patient. So no, this is controlled by a launch contact. So uh, because uh, in the uh, Flash app here, I guess it's uh, there. It is configured as to uh, launch this flow. I mean, to use this flow launched uh, from, I mean, launched by selecting one patient. Now you can search one patient. Let's let's search a zone. Let's use this zone link and click accept. And hit current access. And yeah, you can see all the uh, medications for the patient. So this is his name, his own link, and his prescriptions are listed here. So now let's uh, let's try to modify some of the functionalities. So here we are getting the uh, prescriptions for the patient. Now if I want to return the uh, allergies, so uh, I can add it here. So we just have to add some extra function. So I'll name it a get allergies. Get allergies. And here I need to import uh, allergy intolerance here. So from client.models.lrz intolerance import LZ intolerance. Okay. Now here I can use uh, medic instead of medication request, I will be using allergy intolerance and everything will be the same here. Uh, instead of press, I will use allergies. And I can displace this one. Great. Now, at this get allergies, it should be called from the root here. So, uh, so when, uh, let, let, let me get to the function where it is called. So here, yeah, here you can see the quit prescriptions here, it is called in here. Now I can add, uh, uh, or I can add before the function, before this get prescription call, I can add allergies. It's equal to get allergies. And we were ending the smart, that means this, our smart configuration. <clears throat> and when you get this, let's see, we can inspect these uh, objects here. So I'm adding uh, import pdb, pdb.set, create. So this is for the purpose of to uh, inspect these analysis objects. So save it. And I think the server will auto reload. And again, go back to the go back to front end and click sense patient. Let's, let's reset first and click authorize. So again, we'll be redirected to the uh, login screen. So here, fire and the password for the uh, provider. Now click login. Uh, it will uh, move to the patient selection chart. Here I am again uh, providing the same patient in zone link. Uh, click accept and grant access. Now here, uh, as you can see here, the execution is stopped because uh, I, I, I added this uh, line. Now I can debug this uh, information, what, what, what information inside these allergies objects. Let's, let's, let's uh, just type allergies and see what's inside. So I, we, can say that we can see that this one is uh, an allergy intolerance objects. So it's a list of allergy intolerance objects. Now I can access the first index and it will return the allergy intolerance objects. Now each object, each object is mapped to one uh, fire resource. And uh, now uh, to see the schema of these uh, intolerance resources, we have to re read the schema from the HL7 here. You can click this link, LSE intolerance resource, and it will show you the all the information related to this LSE intolerance resource. Now, uh, if you go down here, you, you can see the LSE intolerance resource, uh, the structure uh, is defined here. So inside one LSE intolerance 
issues uh, here it uh, we have identifier and up uh, and uh, for each of these uh, properties you can here also it is defined the type of those properties let's uh, for example the identifier it's the identifier name this this name as pro type identifier for example clinical status the type of clinical status this code concept codable concept so uh, in this way you can uh, you can see uh, the schema here and uh, also if, if you here type other incidents as zero dot identifier it's blank because here it says the identifier can be optional or it can be more than one so it can be a list of identifier or it can be none again let's let's try clinical status so type dot clinical status now clinical status it's uh it, it is returning one uh, codable concept, which is of this type, codable concept. Now, if you go here in the, in the inside codable concept, click this type, and and the I guess it's loading. Yeah, you can see the codable concept here. Codable concept object. Click on. Click on it. Here it is uh, displaying the codable concept here. Now inside one particular concept you have coding and text. Now uh, you just can type uh, codable uh, coding, sorry coding. And it's again it's again one coding object which is of type this. And let's let's also try this text here. So dot text. So it's empty again because it's it can be optional or at uh, max it, it it can be one. So uh, again, coding it can be optional or it can be more than one. Now let's click coding, and here you can see the structure of coding inside coding. What uh, information can be present now inside one coding object? You can see here you, you have system versions code display. Uh, let's try to access this code. So dot coding dot code now list of the has no attribute code because when you see coding uh, it's a list of uh, coding objects so you have to it first access the index and then type code ah you can see it's active and also let's let's see the display let's see what's in display it's also active. So uh, let me go back to the LZ object and also here. Uh, so now, uh, what information can we extract from the LZ intolerance objects? Let's say uh, we want to know uh, want want to know the type of the LSD intolerance. So what can be the type? The type it can be, um, uh, or or we, we can access the category. So the category, for example, it is food, medication allergies, environment, biology. So for that we have to access these category properties from the LSD intolerance. So let's. Uh, we have already accessed the uh, LSE intolerance object. Now, just we have to access this property, the type. So let's type. Now it's it's blank here because uh, we don't have any information uh, for this type. Let's let's uh, let's see the category. Dot category. Ah, here it's displaying. It's it displaying the medication. So uh, the category, well, you can see that it can be optional or it can be more than one. So that's why it's coming in the, inside a list of uh, a list of objects. So uh, here it is represented as, as 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 a string. So the medication here you can see the category is medication. Now uh, we want more from these. Uh, 
from this allergy intolerance objects. Let's see an erection. Let's see an erection. So again, we have to access the reaction. Now here's a list of allergy intolerance reaction objects. And again, you just index, uh, access the first index. And again, you have to, uh, you can, you, you, you can just uh, access using, I guess, dot coding, maybe. Uh, let me, let me see what are the properties here. So inside the uh, LSD intolerance reaction object, we can access uh, ID, then um, we have uh, some meaningful okay, descriptions. Let's say description. Ah, it's hives. So now the, we, we, we can now uh, get more information from these allergy intolerance object by just uh, following the schema and uh, its resources here, its, its rituals. Here is a map to one of these resources. Now it's easy for someone to just access the data instead of, instead of, you know, uh, instead of uh, getting this kind of data for, uh, for this station and you have to manually parse this station and again you have to uh, access uh, the information inside here. So this library, it's good because it handles the structure for you. So uh, that's how you can access um, uh, access other resources. So now you can add many, uh, you can add many functionalities here, like I have this get allergies. Now uh, you can modify this application by yourself and um, you can return this information. You can return this information here in the HTML so that the front end is, uh, the front end can be sensed. So that's all how you can access the uh, fire resources using smart on fire apps. And I hope you, uh, you, you have a good understanding of how the smart on fire app works and how to access uh, different resources uh, uh, from fire and now if you here if you go uh, if, if you read these uh, hl7 fire specifications here you can see there are many different versions here so it is currently displaying the release 5 now you can sense back to r4 version so now uh, go uh, to resources and you can see all these resources that are available for hl7 fire and uh, the uh, the earlier we we have uh, access the medication request resources. So here are all these uh, schema are defined here inside this medication request, and uh, also uh, for each of the resources, you will get some uh, here some examples as the point. Now, if you uh, click here in this example tab for one resource and if you click on session, so you can see how these resources uh, is look like. So all this information are available uh, inside the HL7 file. Uh, you can read it and you can use it to parse your information. And uh, if you don't want to use this uh, library, then you can manually, uh, of course you can manually uh, interview this information from the fire server. You just have to uh, follow the four steps. I I told you earlier that uh, first you have to get the uh, authorization URL and token URL, and then uh, the second thing you have to retrieve the authorization code and then access it, access it for an access token. And using the access token, you just uh, send one GET request to the fire server. Uh, uh, with, with, with some extra information like which which resources you want to retrieve or do you want any uh, do you want to provide any ID for that resource? So and finally the last thing you you will be doing is to parse that parse that incoming data. I mean the JSON and you, now and and then you can uh, return this information in a uh, very representative way to the front end. So that's all I want to. Uh, 
and I want to show you uh, for uh, building a smart on fire apps. So hope uh, you like this video and uh, bye bye. Thank you.